Okay, people, so the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie is finally out in theaters. And I gotta be honest with you guys. I gotta keep it real. I gotta keep it 100 about how I feel about this film. After watching it, I went out to theaters over here in North America, in the West. Obviously, it's been out in Japan since December 24th, aka Christmas Eve 2021. So they've had a few months to let it digest over here. However, it just hit over here, and I just watched it last night as of the recording of this video. And I ain't gonna lie, I got quite a bit of things to say about this film uh, because it's been a long time coming. Ever since the announcement of this film, a lot of fans, including myself, that are diehard Jujutsu Kaisen fans are kind of like, whoa, we, we, we've been waiting for this. What's going to happen? Is it going to be good? Are they going to do it justice? But let's get into it all. For no matter how you know, get it done. No Okay, people, so in case you don't know the history behind Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, this film, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. For starters, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero's film initially started as not even Jujutsu Kaisen. Initially, the story was titled something else entirely, and it was actually serialized in Jump Square, not Shonen Jump Magazine. However, after I want to say it was four chapters, if I'm not mistaken, ultimately the series wrapped up and would later on resurface as a full-on serialized version in Weekly Shonen Jump Magazine. But one of the key elements about that initial run of manga is the fact that the author, when they re-serialized it in Weekly Shonen Jump, they decided to keep it somewhat canonical and connected with their original draft version of the story and basically made it that that was earlier in the story, essentially a prequel. One thing led to another, Jujutsu Kaisen popped off after that excellent season one done by MAPPA Studios. And here we are, they decided to adapt the Jujutsu Kaisen prequel series, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, in to a film and wow I guess for starters one of the major things to talk about the elephant in the room is the fact that Jujutsu Kaisen Zero due to the fact that it is a prequel ultimately doesn't include a lot of the main cast of characters from the main series Jujutsu Kaisen because this takes place a year before that main crew started in Jujutsu High so you have a whole different set of characters some of which again are seen in the main series because Yuta's story the main character of Jujutsu Kaisen Yuta to Okotsu ultimately kind of starts off identical almost to Yuji's he's tied up Gojo is ultimately telling him that there's something you know a curse that's making problems and ultimately makes a deal with Yuta that allows him to go on hunting and taking down curses and whatnot and yeah we get introduced to his classmates I guess you could say because it makes it like what a four-man squad you got Panda which again all of these characters have been included in the main series you got Panda you got Inumaki and you got Maki and I'm not even going to lie. I'm going to throw this in here right here. And I want to know you guys' opinion. I'm going to ask this question right now. Please answer. Answer truthfully. And if you want to get really descriptive, I'm going to be reading these comments, fam. Let me know. Give me the details. In terms of comparing as far as overall package, which trio or which group in general do you prefer more the one that we have in Jujutsu Kaisen of Kugisaki Nobara Fushiguro Megami and Itadori Yuji or these guys of Inumaki Maki and Panda because I'm not even gonna lie as I'm watching the film I'm thinking to myself in the movie theaters I wish that they were the MCs I wish that this never got not cancelled I don't know what exactly happened but I wish it never got transferred from Jump Square to Jump because yeah uh, this like th these guys are awesome like yo it's such a different twist because honestly you could always just look at it and first of all there's going to be the naruto comparisons i mean for crying out loud my niece and nephew was like hey there's some elements of naruto it kind of reminds me a little bit of it in, in certain regard you know the three-man squad gojo of course is going to get those kakashi comparisons except with this previous squad it feels so much more of like a radical departure to that shonen trope that naruto essentially popularized i don't know if it created but it definitely popularized and it's not even necessarily a shonen trope it's just you know the three-man cell and whatnot uh, a structure so to speak and storytelling of having three mcs but like dude in comparison to again something that is a staple to a lot of people from the previous gen of anime manga fans of naruto naruto sasuke and sakura those main trio these three are nothing like them you have panda who is literally just a giant freaking panda well he's not really a panda but yeah we have panda then we got inumaki with his whole thing that fun fact i always thought when kakashi got unmasked what inumaki has his power with the curses and his mouth and whatnot 
that. I always thought that Kakashi was going to have like some curse seal around his mouth that maybe if he said a word or something, it would have done some devastating things and that's why he got sealed. Like I always thought there was going to be a big mystery with Kakashi that never actually panned out. But hey, it, it works with Inumaki and Inumaki is pretty dope. And then we have my favorite female character and I'm going to throw this in there that she might be my favorite character of the entire series. I'm going to just keep it real. I'm not one of those people that it has to be a man for me to feel validated as my favorite uh, MC. Like, no, I I'm going to say that I think Maki is my favorite character of the entire series. When I saw her playing the role of, you know, the, the main female MC, I was so excited. I was so excited. I was like, I love Maki. <laughs> I love Maki. And again, in comparison to that trio, a uh, uh, trope, so to speak, that Naruto has, I don't want to say again, created, but more so popularized at the very least over here in the West, they just go a different direction in all ways. They they really mix it up and whatnot in comparison to like, you know, the, the trio from the original series, while I love them to death too, don't get me wrong. You don't, you ain't going to talk dirty about my Nobara Kugisaki or, you know, Megami been beasting lately. And don't forget about Sukuna inside of Itadori. That's really awesome as well. But in comparison, like I like Maki more than Nobara. I like Yuta way more than I like Itadori. And Panda and Megami is so hard to compare because they're totally different type of characters and shit like that. Just in general, the previous squad were freaking awesome. I, I kept finding myself thinking and wishing that these were more prevalent in the main series. Thankfully, uh, Gaga Akutami does an incredible job of incorporating them as, you know, some side characters that get a lot of shine. But yeah, seeing them here honestly was really awesome. I don't want to go too much into the art and animation all i will say is that bapa did a really awesome job i will say that uh i don't feel that this was their 1010 percent out of 10 effort i think it was a thousand and nine maybe per se in terms of there were some scenes that i was like that probably could have been a little bit better in terms of I know the standard of what MAPPA can do. I'm well aware of everything they've done and whatnot. So I'll definitely say that while the art and animation was gorgeous in a lot of scenes, in terms of cinematic wise, it didn't provide that um, often, so to speak. And there's right here where I'm going to, because I've been, you know, gushing over how much I love these characters, how awesome the animation is. Uh, let me throw in here real quick that the music was phenomenal. You know, it was funny that they used to make fun of, and <laughs> I don't know why I'm giving Funimation praise this week but all right they used to make fun of Funimation for adding in rock tracks into the Dragon Ball Z films and you would have like some really awesome rock songs come out out of nowhere but they used to make fun of it and say oh no put back the Kukuchiki original Japanese score only for anime to go in that direction later on in a more prevalent way and I love when those rock tracks with the full-on vocals and everything come on during the battles this movie really provided a lot of awesome music and that's something that's really important to me like from the jump I remember I was looking quickly I looked at my my nephew when the music started in the very beginning i forget what scene it was but i just looked at him and said the music is so good already and that's very big coming from me because i'm a very very big music head and let's talk about a little bit more of this whole plot going back to yuta because in case you don't know the synopsis of this whole thing main character yuto kotsu essentially had a tragedy happen with a childhood friend known as rika where she ultimately passed away and again like i said you know the whole thing of him getting tied up by gojo because essentially he starts being haunted by this curse that is essentially Rika herself. She seemingly is moving around the world as a curse and continuing to hurt people around Yuta, which he's trying to use Jujutsu Hai to eventually get rid of this curse from being around him because everybody around him is getting hurt. A lot of people are getting destroyed because of this curse. While on the flip side of things, you have the main villain that was also seen in the main series, uh, Suguru Geto, ultimately moving forward with trying to do dastardly deeds and destroy Jujutsu Hai with his sorcery and yeah there's definitely some differences with that character from the main series to here in terms of in this movie you could see that there's a trait that isn't really as prevalent in the series in terms of Suguru Geto feels like a very much so bigot and even prejudice towards people that don't have sorcery powers like in the in the tv series he's just like whatever he's almost jokey jokey when he's not doing you know just straight up evil stuff and this one he is really really prejudiced like he talks about humans that don't have sorcery that can't you know do jujutsu techniques or anything like that he talks about them like they're dirt he refers to them as monkeys in fact and he's just really hateful towards people that don't have that type of power and that's a big difference that you don't really see in the tv series the flashbacks in this film with his relationship between him and go Joe was phenomenal again like you know it's from the manga and 
and that helps to really give you some solid material especially if you know what you're getting yourself into you're like okay because again they did a really really fantastic job now the counter to that of hey it's from the manga is the fact that hey it's from the manga and realistically it was a few chapters of a series that got wrapped up and re-serialized ultimately it doesn't lend itself often to feel cinematic a lot of the times i'll be honest with you it felt like it was a bunch of really awesome amazing episodes kind of stitched together and less of feeling like hey this is supposed to be a film because again in you know its inception it wasn't supposed to be a film it was a weekly shonen jump manga uh that was essentially wrapped up early i would throw the argument here that this film feels like it could be a starter kit of shonen battle series to anybody in the world that doesn't know about it and want to get into the world of anime i felt that very strongly after watching this film that it gives you all of the basic premise of a early shonen manga shonen anime arc you get you know the main character introductions the trio the sensei the threats the new capabilities the techniques admittedly they did you know rush through maybe some stuff because it definitely felt like at times like this character could have a little bit more depth so there that's the downsides in, in terms of yeah it honestly felt like a starter kit film like bring this film and show this to anybody that may be interested in anime and they may get into anime because i'll give you even more of an idea of how i feel about this film in terms of i feel like you could watch this film and of course it's going to be a different experience but you'll get somewhat of the same type of not necessarily satisfaction but maybe enjoyment and potentially somewhat of the experience of watching from the beginning of naruto to the end of the orochimaru konoha invasion like that's pretty much for the most part what this movie essentially covers if you really think about it and that's great like like that's some of the most classic stuff of all time and of course i'm not saying that it copies it i'm just saying that that's the parameters of what the most part this movie provides which again feels like a starter kit shonen but in a, an amazing way because it looks amazing and it's it's awesome it's jujutsu kaisen <laughs> And with all that being said, in terms of should you watch it, well, I've watched quite a few anime films back in my day. Some of the more recent ones that I've seen that comes to memory off rip was one of the latest My Hero Academia films, the third film with Rhodey. <laughs> uh, then also one of the most recent uh, anime films that I've watched as well, the Demon Slayer Mugen Train film, which interestingly enough in comparison, because in case you don't know, Demon Slayer Mugen Train film was also based on stuff from the manga, but the difference between the two of them and it's even more ironic is the demon slayer movie is some manga chapters from the manga like in the middle in between arcs and whatnot it's a full-on arc turned into a film and yet somehow still felt more cinematic than this that was its own you know contained story self-contained prequel that's something that I, it's interesting to note that i felt more cinematic i felt more like i was watching a movie with demon slayer than i felt with jujutsu kaisen despite the fact that demon slayer should if anything feel less like that considering it's just an arc in between arcs of an ongoing story and Jujutsu Kaisen for the most part can even somewhat be conceived as self-contained if you really wanted to keep it that way but overall if I had to give it a score I could give it no less than an 8 but being realistic I would say that this is a solid 8.5 to a 9 out of 10 in terms of man anybody could go watch this film the relationship and the whole story structure between Yuta and Rika is something that is really fascinating because you can get Jujutsu Kaisen if you go watch the TV anime absolutely Absolutely, but the difference with this film that it provides that Jujutsu Kaisen Zero itself lends to be is the fact that it tells the story of Yuta and Rika. You're getting that story with the Jujutsu Kaisen outline behind it, and it's a very beautiful one. I definitely had tears in my eyes. I'm gonna just keep it a buck. I don't know, you call me a crybaby, whatever. Towards the end of the film, a lot of sad stuff, emotional stuff. Action looked amazing. Gojo running through. You know, Gojo was doing some epic stuff. Yeah, I gotta stress one more time that in terms of the main cast of characters yuta inumaki maki panda i really like them and i would have even preferred them to be the main characters of jujutsu kaisen because yeah maki greatness that's my immaturity right there baby maki's amazing waifu okay i just had to throw one of those in there come on now but yeah people i'm curious what you guys think if you've seen the jujutsu kaisen zero movie by studio mappa what did you 
think? Did you watch it in theaters? How did you experience it? Uh, do you feel like, in terms of the way it's set up, that it feels like it could be a starter kit shown in film to get people into the medium and the genre? Also, do you prefer the new cast that we have with the serialized full-on TV anime of Yuji, Nobara, and Megumi? Or you prefer the old of Inumaki, Maki, Panda, and Yuta's epicness as well? And if you haven't seen the film, are you going to check it out? Why haven't you? I would even argue, to be honest with you, a thousand percent that you can watch this film without watching Jujutsu Kaisen. But I'll add in a disclaimer that... I think it would probably benefit you to watch Jujutsu Kaisen before watching this, despite the fact that it's a prequel, because there's so much, you know what I'm saying, lore, and there's so much intricacies to Jujutsu Kaisen, even for, you know, a shonen and shonen jump, that you might even be lost going into the film with a few aspects and connections and whatnot, that if you already had seen the series, you're gonna be like, oh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. so I probably would despite all of that recommend getting the experience of watching the tv anime first and then watching the film but you could a thousand percent watch the film without ever watching the tv anime and you might not feel like you're missing nothing maybe i'm just adding extra i just personally feel like it might be a better experience to watch the tv anime first because it just gives you more of an idea of what you're in store for and yeah people uh jujutsu kaisen zero long awaited highly anticipated and it was overall a really kick-ass experience and again in terms of comparing it to some of the previous anime films that i had watched of like my hero and demon slayer it's probably my favorite of all of them it just really was awesome it felt something a, a breath of fresh air to a certain degree with certain aspects like i really liked yuta's character from vocally how he sounded a little bit out of the norm of just being a you know typical shonen mc i don't know i just i really rocked with these characters maybe that's the best thing about this one is that the characters is so strong that yeah the story is just basically hey uh, uh evil spirit is haunting somebody and there's an evil dude doing bad things it's the characters that I fell in love with while watching this film and that's hard to make me fall in love with characters within and you know an hour and a half to two hours they did a phenomenal job that's all i have for this one though thanks for watching hope you enjoyed i'm for world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life babe. have an awesome day peace in and jujutsu kaisen zero baby that was awesome i love those guys panda inumaki yuta and i had to save the best for last maki watch it now nah, seriously go watch it if you like shonen battle you should not skip out on this at all even if you haven't seen jujutsu kaisen go watch it have an awesome one <laughs>